Using any three prescribed text show how certain helps in the development of themes, in highlighting themes. In unanswered cries, the village is very important. As Olabisi visits the village to spend some time with the mother. And in her dressing and mannerism, you can see that she's different from the village girl, bringing out contrast. She also witnesses firsthand the procession of Bondo young women and girls. And her mother yanks her not to go closer to them because she's a boker, highlighting violence and conflict. Why on her way to the stream, she gets into a confrontation with Yapos's two daughters because she asks them a harmless and innocent question whether they are bokas and there is a fight in which she tears their pants thereby uncovering Bondo secrets. Yapos visits Makalai's house and gives her ultimatum to bring Olabisi to the Bondo camp to be circumcised else she will have a difficult delivery highlighting conflict and superstition. The consequence is that Olabisi flees, attempting to run back to Freetown. Nevertheless, in the fight, which leaves her unconscious, her mother realizes that she's no longer a virgin. And this is what makes her determined for her daughter to be circumcised so that she can be able to control her sexual desires. Secondly, the forest is very important because it's the dwelling place of the Bondo spirits and where the Bondo circumcision takes place. Olabisi runs into the forest to find a safe passage. Ironically, she lands at the Bondo camp where she's arrested. And although she flees, she witnesses firsthand the ordeal and the pain that young girls go through in order to be circumcised, highlighting superstition, pain, and determination. Ade Jones' apartment is full of love. She lives with her daughter, with his daughter, and Oya. Oya is very angry that he does not want to be committed to their relationship and accuses her of having other affairs with other women. But Ade tells her that he doesn't have a permanent job, even though all the bills have been footed by Oya in the past month, and she threatens to leave him for good. He proposes, highlighting love, moral indecency, and Olavisi is taken care of by Oya when she runs away from the village back to Freetown. The courtroom is very important because that is where the disagreement between Makalai and Ade Jones is resolved. Ade Jones firmly opposes his daughter being circumcised. And he takes the case to court. It's a landmark case because it touches on the very fabric of an old age tradition. And in a very witty, in a very witty manner, the judge asks for both camps to have a consultation, but also rules out that it should be the decision of the young girl to decide whether she will be circumcised or not, highlighting conflict and the fact that Oya stands to defend Olabisi also highlights love. In twilight of misty foliage, the bar is very important because this is where Bimai makes most of his pertinent comments and throws a jab against religion, against the administration for its corrupt practices, and hints us to the promiscuous life of Reverend Rod Beggar, highlighting evil, corruption, and moral indecency. Bima's wife refuses to give him food 
because he does not provide. Whereas he spends money out on women. At night, he decides to steal food. And this food spills on him, leaving him disgraced, highlighting conflict. Reverend Rod Beggar visits Edeka in her house to find out how the Christians feel about the church. And she's very blunt to tell her that the church is not doing much to help the Christian. But he focuses on her buttocks, highlighting moral indecency. The bishop's house is a sanctuary. The bishop receives everyone. He receives the hoodlums led by Dracula, gives them food and gives them a place to sleep. At the end, they abduct him, try to kill him, but fortunately, he survives. Highlighting evil in the society, love and hospitality. When the bishop goes to the treasury, Sister Bofa, Bafa, counts money and each in each of the pile, there is a lack of some banknotes, which the, rev, which the cardinal takes time to count meticulously. And at the end, she produces the missing banknotes, highlighting corruption and hypocrisy. In the old man and the sea, the terrace is the place where most fishermen and tourists come to admire the sea. And this is where Santiago relaxes with Manolin when he comes back home empty-handed. And here, the share conversation about baseball, Manolin buys him food and drinks, highlighting human companionship and love. Santiago lives in a shack made of guano without adequate furniture. He uses newspapers as pillow. He has a broken chair and a small place of fire with a dirty floor, highlighting poverty. But on the shelf, he keeps the picture, the tinted picture of his wife, wrapped in a clean shirt, highlighting loneliness and love. And it is here that Manolin brings food when he realizes that the man has no food and they eat. And it is here that Manolin comforts him when he comes back home exhausted and tells the other fishermen not to bother him. Highlighting love, genuine love. The sea is also very important because it could be considered as Elma or Lama. It provides to the people and can also be a menace to the people. It is a source of livelihood for the fishermen who fish there and earn a living. But at the same time, it can take away joy as Santiago catches the big fish and yet loses it to the sharks, highlighting the importance of nature to man. The marine highlights human struggles, and the sharks highlights the hurdles that man faces in life. Casablanca is also very important because this is where Santiago's youthful agility and bravery had been tested in the hand game with the strongest man on the deck. They had had a hand game and Everybody had expected him to lose. And despite the duration of the hand game, he had finally won, highlighting endurance and determination. In the swamp dwellers, the Makuri household, which is built on stilt, filled with mosquitoes and lack of, with an old chair, highlights poverty. Nevertheless, when the beggar comes, he is warmly received 
and the mud from his legs are washed off, highlighting hospitality. Although he has revolutionary ideas, the family welcomes him, and Iguezo decides to leave him behind to be his bonds man, highlighting determination. He does not want to live on charity, but prefers to earn a living by working on the land. The North is also a very important setting to understanding of the text. Bukanji, in particular, known as the land of the beggars. This is narrated by the beggar himself, who had told us that it's a place characterized by drought, locust, where they had been frustrated after having planted with a little rain that had fallen, and the greenness only for the crops to be wiped out by locust, highlighting climatic hazards and change. It's a call that we should take care of the environment in which we live. The city is also very important. It is a place of hope. It is a place where people think there, is, there are greener pastures. Yes, some succeed. Awuchike goes there and succeed. He is a successful timber merchant. Nevertheless, there is a price that is paid with wealth that comes from the city. It gets human bond. And that is the reason why Awuchike has not sent a word back home and has not sent money to help his family. And even when his brother, his twin brother visits him, he is a stranger, total stranger to him. He makes him to lose his money. He makes him to lose his wife and allows him to come back home to the village frustrated. And this is what pushes Iguazu to confront the Kadie highlighting conflict, hypocrisy, and materialism. The swamp is the dwelling place of the serpent deity, highlighting superstition, who is revered because the land, the whole swamp belongs to him. And they give sacrifices for the protection of the land and their livelihoods. The crocodiles are haunted for their skin, and team and traders come from the town from the city to buy them. And in so doing, they entice women with money. Iguezo comes back to meet a devastated farm where all his crops have been destroyed by the flood, highlighting frustration, poverty, misery, materialism, and a call for the preservation of nature. 